Here I am at the Sam Knoll Museum again, and here we're going to have a explore a special exhibit here that started back in October 15th. It is Sahara Sea Monsters. This is talking about fossil life throughout the Sahara Desert region that we find fossils in throughout not just one time period, but through uh, good about all of known life. So we're going by billions of years up until you know whenever this exhibit ends. So I have, this is my first time looking at it. So let's take a look what they have to offer. Okay, the first t first plaque we find here talks about the Precambrian Precambrian period, um, which is about four billion to, to five hundred thirty-five million years ago. About eighty percent of you know time on this Earth, which is you know our earliest life is about three and a half billion years ago, as far as we know. It consists of al um, um, organisms like algae and um, cyanobacteria, which makes stromatolites. Um, the stromatolites are very important because they're the reason we have a wide supply of oxygen on this planet. You, know, you can see some examples right here. They're neat little things. The cyanobacteria starts off, you know, um, they could do photosynthesis, so, and of course that process creates oxygen and makes its own food. But out in the, um, but what happens is that when they're exposed out in the um, ocean, like this, the cyanobacteria on the surfaces that they exist on gets covered with dirt and muck, so they reach out to an hour later to continue the process. And then more build on and so forth and so forth, and you get layer by layer. Uh, just think about a, a ball of rubber bands and you get an idea. Here we can see um, samples of trilobites you find from the Cambrian on up. That's a neat one. That's that's the top of, of this one after they you know extracted it. Shapes and sizes, trying to bite still. Here's an artist's um, rendition of what Morocco may have looked like during the Cambrian period. Of course, we have tremendous amounts of trilobites, but also, if you take a look at the shadow right here, we have the, uh, what was the, Akato Paradoxides, one of the great predators of the time period. This is a plaque talking about a mass mortality of a trilobite st uh, species, Dichilokephalia. Uh, In fact, here it is. About 50 trilobites died all in one big mass group. Of course, despite the spe you know, most of these are of that species I just mentioned, but it also here and here are two different species. In fact, let's find out what they are. Let's find out this plaque. It's of these two species in the red. This is a reproduction of Emma Lacarid, which is one of the apex predators of the Ordovician period. Very rare according to um, the plaques here. But of course, we should we see more trilobites. I love how these are beautifully carved out. You know how you go underneath it so you can see how see the dimensions of these. Trilobite Highway. Again, I just love how it's carved underneath the trilobite so you can see the dimensions of it. Here we see a reproduction of the Ordovician period here. Damalacarid here, so of course we have jellyfish, more trilobites. 
Now, this is a weird one. I have to admit, I'm not familiar with this, but according to the plaques, this is the, uh, this is over six feet long in real life. It's the largest animal of its time. It's a filter feeder. In fact, here they talk about the filter feeder. Yeah, it's about six and a half feet long. Uh, Agirocasis bemuli. So wonderful to think, you know, to know about these things. Here we have a wonderful fossil display, and this is a real fossil as well, of brittle stars. These are echinoderms related to crinoids and starfish and such, urchins and everything. They're very rare in the fossil record because they're very brittle. Let's take a good look at this. But every once in a while you find a nice display like this. And these guys are still alive today. They survived all, they survived all the mass extinctions for the Ordovician on up. Of course, you can't get enough trilobites eyes here like this display here. Let's take a look. Size here, God, it's just beautiful to look at. It'd be wonderful to see these in in real life. Sorry, just moving the magnifier over. Othocerus. These are um, relatives of the octopus and squid and kettlefish. They are mollusk of cephalopods, and they have these long cone-shaped, some are bullet-shaped shells. There's a whole mass of them right here. And of course, this one you can actually touch. These are beautifully smooth. Oh, beautiful! Uh, beautiful display here. Because now we go, we skip the Silurian, now we go to, to Devonian, which is the age of fish. Fish um, started off in the Silurian, but they diversify heavily to where the Devonian is now called the age of fish. And here's what they mean by that. Yes, these are placoderms, these are very, um, uh, very hard um, headed fish there. In fact, this is, uh, uh, let's see, right here is the description. Titanic these, Timeri. These can measure up to 40 feet long and in our filter feeders. But we like our predators, so of course there's a classic dunk, uh, Dunkleosteus, which we have one here at the museum. Um, uh, one of the have one of these at the museums. But you can take a look at the hard bony shells there form teeth. These are not actual teeth. These are just the bony plates that form a um, convergence of two of teeth. These are scale models of the Titanicthes and Dunkleosteus.
here we go into the Triassic after the Permian mass extinction. But, you know, then, you know even there were survivors, here we see talking about um, Deuterosaurus, which is an early amphibian. You get to see the size of a you know, silhouette of a man and a camel, and here is the um, you know, estimated 10 feet amphibian at the time. Good thing we don't have those today, but we have their fossils. Here's the head. there's an artist rendition of what it might have looked like. Now we come to the highlights of these exhibit of this exhibit here and here and of course you can't talk about Northern Africa acquired life without talking about Spinosaurus aegypticus and we have a nice little reproductive model right here. In fact not just the head but the entire animal. Here we see the evolution of thought here about based on what we knew from 1915 when Spinosaurus was first discovered by Stromer. We had very little. The original fossils were destroyed during World War II, but the monograph told in very fine detail what all existed, and this was a reproduction at the time. In 2001, thanks to movies like Jurassic Park, this was the image we'd come to see of Spinosaurus. 2018, getting closer. 2020. around a good 40 feet of the animal. Of course, here we have this little deal right here to give you a size comparison. The silhouette over here is estimated how big it could get based on the largest, the largest estimated um, individual, which is found at this museum right here. Of course, Spinosaurus, is the high, one of the highlights of this exhibit is, is more amphibious than full aquatic. Here we get the more aquatic ones. Here we got a smaller Mosasaurus here. We have, of course, turtles in the oceans in uh, Morocco and the Sahara. This is a camel turtle because you could tell and that's, it has two humps on its shell. Toxochellus. This is the head of a plesiosaur, Xerophosara oceanus. Get an idea how big this guy is. Here we have a couple heads of Mosasaurus here. Here's Tylosaurus. And this one right here, Prognathodon. Bone crushing teeth there. Of course, you may not, you know, fascinating as the heads are, you probably want to see a whole animal. Let's take a look at this one, Mosasaurus. feet right here. Of course after the Cretaceous you got the beginning of the um, Cenozoic starting with the Paleogene but that doesn't mean things get uninteresting here. Let's take a look at this crocodile. This is a Dryosaurus and one of the interesting things is the fact that like turtles it's got a nice little armor back not the same as a turtle, but scoots, which are these little bony plates on its back there, you know, in this case it, it fused together to a nice solid armor on it. Boy, very long limbs, although some would say he's a good swimmer but a poor walker. in the Cenozoic, that's where we start to find the earliest ancestors of what we know as whales. And a bit more predatory than you know, our counterparts today. Not saying killer whales aren't dangerous or anything, but I digress. 
This is Papositis lagarda. It's the head, of course, the hips, and the hips, what they find interesting is that these are not fused to the spine yet, so it may have some use of it. Here's another whale relative, Chrysocetus, a bit more complete of a skeleton. And this was probably the top predator of its time. This is a Basilosaurus. Again, another whale relative. Let's take a good look at it. talking about the largest shark around uh, of, the, of the Sahara and at uh, the time Odontus Megalodon. In fact here's a reconstruction of his jaws. Measure about a good 60 feet. Of course, here we are from the Neogene to modern day. Don't let that disturb you. It's not the end of all the wondrous large monsters because, you know, even off the coast of Morocco today, the largest animal um, that we know of is still around. That is the blue whale. 